What's it like this morning? Describe. Cold. It's chilly. It's cold. It's dark. It's cold. <laughs> but uh, it'll all change here in a minute as soon as we start hiking. Okay, getting to these bulls over here to the left. So we do that. Pretty sure it'll warm up pretty good. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. What are you thinking? That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, see if we can close this deal today so we can sleep in tomorrow. It'll be nice. Get on there. Oh, it's tight. It's so tight. <laughs> it's so tight. heard from everybody at camp everybody's seen the elk but everything's at 100 yards like yeah we just need that random bull to, to turn and we're gonna get them yeah it's just odd that in Wyoming we can call in a bull especially in a draw unit multiple times a day and we're just mm -hmm. for some reason I don't know what we're doing different or what's different here, but they're just not coming into calls like like we see there, especially satellite bulls, which is so odd. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's where some some teams have ran into satellite bulls, and I think the what we're targeting here are just mature bulls and nothing's messing with them. Yeah, they yeah. might they might be around, but they're just being silent, like they don't want to get their ass kicked. Yeah, the only satellite bulls I've seen here are spikes. I don't really want to call them in anyways. So. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, the growls and stuff we're hearing, these are big bulls. Yes, it sucks hunting private property lines, but there are some big bulls there, and all they got to do is just be out on the public side when we get there. We just need so, <clears throat> a halfway dominant satellite bull to just pop in, mm -hmm. and then it's going to be money. Yeah. thinking they were rutting pretty hard last night and then like John said they're a little sleepy today and I mean even a little bit probably yeah and, and that cow probably got dropped a couple times last night and, and I'm sure there there's nothing in heat at the moment or something you know it's changed drastically the last two days we've been in here it's been yeah it's been on fire so
got on some bulls yesterday morning and I messed up <laughs> came in here last night they weren't talking so we are on the back side of that ridge right now uh, we just got up here bugled and we had one little bugle we're gonna walk over here and see if we can get into them So, that was a bust this morning. It was, the bulls have completely quieted down. That, that cow must have came out of heat. But uh, we are gonna go back to where we saw the bull off the road. See if we can see which direction they went or which drainage they took. And try to go in and get a mid-afternoon kill in. He wasn't a monster bull, probably, probably like 300. Yeah, 300, 300. Maybe a little bit over, but um, yeah, I'm gonna go plug an arrow at him. So if we can find him and his cows and hopefully there's a bigger bull around just watching and waiting for a cow to come in heat, then yeah, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, it was just completely dead. Yeah, nothing. Hopefully the next time we turn on the camera it's because I'm at full draw on this bull. <laughs> on the right side. <laughs> on the right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Oh, 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 oh. We just got to the hottest place we've ever been in our life, and we just got a response about what you think probably two, three, two, three hundred yards that way. And, and he's ripping. He's an absolute giant. I can already tell you that. Probably four fifty. <laughs> 250 and we'll take it. <laughs> a spike. <laughs> if you'll come into a call, we'll, we'll kill him. Tell me what happened. So we parked the buggy and sat for a second, heard a bugle, so we jumped out and went after it. And uh, closed in, heard two different bulls, and then we're working down to them, and then all of a sudden, one of them, before we knew it, was bugling. He was already up up our right side and and then they they popped over the saddle <clears throat> kind of quickly I don't know if it was something if we pushed them out or what but um, then we so we decided to turn and go after that other bugle that was still going we thought they were following them up but they were actually working a different way in the canyon so went down and followed them around and a lot of deadfalls. A lot of deadfalls, lot so of deadfall. it slowed us down quite a bit. And then he just kept moving and moving and moving. I think the first bull that went up through the saddle went up and worked all the way around. Because when we crossed over, or we, we were when we were going after the other bull, he bugled again from the other side. And I recognized the same bugle. So we dropped down, went back up, because he sounded closer. The other one was way off. So we dropped down, back up, and then worked up the hillside, and he bugled a couple more times. So we came up to this kind of rock shelf. Peeked over, and there he was. I ranged him at 107, just to get an idea how much distance we needed to cover, and he was looking our way. There were tons of pine needles on the ground. crunchy walking up so I think he just heard us coming and thought something was up so he turned and walked away.
Might as well make it count, I guess, you know. saddle real quick try to get up and over similar spot we were yesterday um but really just try to more be him to the punch when we get there so uh we may have been a little late yesterday so we're gonna try to get there a little early so hump out do a couple snares make some calls see if we can pull one in and, and go home that's the goal all right let's do it i say it's cool checker so we're just gonna add a little bit of sand in here try and keep as much out as I can Ooh. can hear some of the pebbles hitting in there <laughs> <laughs> I tried all right <laughs> let's see how it works Ooh, Ooh, I could very good <laughs> there you go That's good enough yeah. Today we didn't hear nothing, so we walked the ridge line around the top of everything and north facing slopes where they like to bed during the day. Cassie was ripping off bugles. Uh, he gave us a little bed bugle and then uh, I cow called and he started bugling and raking trees. So we're gonna get into his bubble. We're gonna try a sequence, a breeding sequence with a bull and me as the cow ahead. We're gonna try and pull him in because he's got a few cows with him, so. Jason would like everyone to know that he's standing on lower ground. Yeah, I am on lower ground, just letting you know I'm not, Dan's not <laughs> six foot nine. Look at them all, we're starting them right now. <laughs> so, now, uh, go back to the original spot where I think we had good we luck. had some luck, so. First three and a half days, so started there. We gave it a couple days, hopefully. And we'll finish here. Yeah, hopefully we end up. That's right. 
day seven continues. This might be a dirt wallow. I've heard about them, but I've never seen one. You have to show it to you. just get the sun off them and bugs or what? I guess so. I'll have to ask Eric about it. Show him his footage. They're also calling it a piss wallow. Oh. So they might pee in it and then they're all in it. That makes sense. Tried listening to some bugles, drove an area, didn't hear nothing. Uh, walked a whole area, didn't hear nothing. That full moon and cold weather the last couple days has had them talking and we don't know if they're just going a little bit quiet, but either way we're gonna be persistent and keep going. That morning we were on him, he came, it was he lower, but he came west. The evening when we got on him, he yeah, came west. Came the night, came west. Same, he crossed the road down near the same spot. Right by the T. I understand, dang it. I don't we, know. Made, we made up a ton of ground on him. Sprint, wind sprints with a carry and a broad-headed broad -headed loaded bow. And trying to bugle me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. We had to end a day like that. Had to end a day like that. Well, let's go back to the buggy. Oh, okay, that way. Thank <laughs> you. 
Welcome to Leopold's King of the Camp here in Elk Camp. We had an amazing week this week. All four teams hustled. It was so awesome to be in camp and to, to see how these guys progressed. We were super grateful with all the help that actually came um, to camp this year. We'll kind of talk about that a little bit, but as we kind of move through this wrap up show, we wanted to talk a little bit about the prize pack that these guys were actually going for. Um, we've got Crispy Boots here, which is a, uh, an awesome sponsor of ours. Uh, Camp Chef actually supplied cutting boards, a cooking set, and a stove uh, for the winners. We've got Black Ovis pants, uh, Kafaru packs. We've got canvas cutter. We've got the bivy system and also the duffel bag here. We've got Mountain Mafia sleeping bags. I mean, the list just keeps going on and on. Bow spiders dead on displays. And then of course, a full set of Kings Camo, uh, their new series, the XK7 series. So this is an amazing prize pack. We're super excited to talk through kind of what transpired this week. You obviously have seen the footage. It was an amazing week. Um, first off, I'm going to in introduce each of the teams that competed this week. So on my right here, we've got team 307. Come on in guys, thank you. We've got the Wild Reapers coming out of Wyoming, both teams. And we've got the Arizona Huntsmen coming in. Before we actually announce the winners um, of the King of the Camp, I wanted to talk about a couple of the people that we had in camp that were super special to us. Zuni Outfitters hosted us here at their base camp. We are super grateful to them. Um, those guys are amazing. Andres and his whole guide crew was awesome just to help us around camp and, and give us a place to stay. But then we had the Elk Bros, the coaches, Cole Wilkes, and also Eric Aragon. These guys were talking to them throughout the week, texting them on different scenarios, talking to them throughout the, the evenings and the mornings, making sure that these guys were on top of their game every step of the way, all through the hunt. Um, I can't talk enough about the Elk Bros and about their course. If you have not checked it out, you need to go check it out. Those guys are as legit as they come as far as talking and strategy and everything elk hunting. Now, I wanted to announce the winners this year with a gross score of 304 and 7 eighths, a age of four years, so a total score of 312, a shot yardage deduction from a 51 yard shot. Our winners, King of the Camps, with a total score of 302 and 7 eighths, Team Idaho. Here is their bow. Congratulations. Way to go, King of the Camp. That is an awesome place. So from everybody here at Elk Camp Season 2 Hunt Wars, we are so grateful. We are excited to continue this. We'll see you on the mountain up in Utah at the Utah Deer King of the Camp. So guys, the week is over. Troy, could you be quiet for a minute? <laughs> so we love your energy, buddy. <laughs> All right, you ready? Who's gonna talk first? About what? I'm good. I don't want. I don't want it. <laughs> so the the lesson is. Uh, make sure tight. you lock tight your broadheads. <laughs> All right, guys. It's been a long week. Oh man, Troy again. Guys, you probably put on close. 70 miles. We're on camera, you should probably say like 100 or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so we had some close calls with you guys, right? Yeah, sure did. Is there any one that was maybe more memorable? The, the broken five that we got after yeah. we were on him four times. Yeah. And the and, howling uh, monkey. Like, him, of all of them, I think that was my favorite one because it was so frustrating. Yeah. I mean, he would push and he would go and be gone. Next thing you know, we hear him, we're like, oh, he's back. You know, this is a unique experience where we've met some incredible individuals from the staff to uh, a real brotherhood of hunters. They were our competitors, the other teammates, and I can tell you that they'll probably be friends to the, for the rest of our lives. This hunt was, you know, once in a lifetime. <laughs>